Hi everyone, David Mala here, and today is the final day for this, the Dealing with Seasonality series. And basically the premise of this whole thing was to be able to give you a complete data science project from beginning to end that people are actually using now to be able, you know, as proof to, of their abilities to get a job in data science or data analysis. This is a great way to show people that you can take campaign data, marketing campaign data, or sales data for, that's time series based and be able to show predictions on it, remove seasonality, deal with seasonality, decompose it, remove cycling trends, other noise, white noise, whatever from the, uh, uh, you know, like other campaigns going on, other th events, holidays, things like that going on, removing that so you can actually see what the campaign really actually did or the sales uh, you know range data you know weeks whatever it is you want to look at you want to look at a month of sale and you want to see it year over year but you want seasonality removed this is the way to do it and uh, so what we're gonna do is you end up with a graph like this let me pull this out over here and you're gonna end up with a graph like this we're gonna plot several models next to each other so you could see our custom model and then several other models so let's get into this and show you what we're doing here and yes people actually have used this uh, complete series here that I've done for you here and they're actually using this to get jobs to become data scientists to prove their work so this is something important for you to know so this again this is part four the final part if you haven't watched parts one two and three please go back and watch them because they build off of each other now in this one we're gonna do is we're gonna do further testing and analysis of our data we're gonna find the actual fit and compare it of our uh, REMA model then we're also going to look at accuracy by numerous industry standard measures like MAP and other things like that. And then in the end, we're going to write our data into a CSV file. So in case we want to go and put it in a dashboard or put it into another analytics product like uh, Power BI or Tableau to show it differently um, or that our users maybe hook up to that. And so we need a dashboard in there for them for that. Uh, or whatever you want to do with it. You can put in Excel and you know create some graphs in there or whatever you want to do with it. So that's the premise of this whole thing. So this is a complete walkthrough. So let's first start with what we're going to do is we're going to take the Riemann model so that we built earlier, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to do this right here. We're going to get our residuals on it. So let's do this. And this is what we're looking at right here. So this gives us our residuals and the ACF and PACFs for each of these models, okay? So I've got that one. I've got this one where seasonality is false, right? Then I've got the next one is this one. Okay, this is our custom fit arena model, which will be fit four, okay? Give it a second, my computer's a little bit slow today. Do, 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 there we go. And see how the fit of that one looks so much better. See how they're all within the bounds here. The other one's kind of breached or touched. Okay. Now let's do a one one one. Why am I doing a one one one? Well, because if you use Altrix, um, Power BI, Web Focus, or any of these other tools that has a generic ARIMA model built into it, it might sound great. Oh, I'm doing an ARIMA model, but you're doing ge highly generalized ARIMA models. This is what you're using. That's the default. And they do that on purpose so that you can use it for a much wider range or array of data sets. But the problem is your accuracy drops big time. So let me show you that. So that's this one. See how you have lags that stick out as I was show, telling you about here and here? Okay. Now that's going to cause lower accuracy or a drop in accuracy. So next we want to do is, so again, these the code up here is very simple for all these. All we did was put them into, so we got ARIMA based on our deseasonalized count, which we built off of earlier, and the order. So the order is the actual, right here, the REMA model. So in these two, it's 111, and in this one is 0325, and these are, don't need that because it says auto REMA in them, okay? So next, we're gonna put in an ETS, okay? What is ETS? Well, let's show you here. This is the decomposition of it, okay? And that's the before and the after and then we have the TS display so we can compare it with the others above and it is within the bounds but not as well as our custom model but you're gonna see here it's also an ETS tends to draw to create a more straight line 
model so it's not as good but this is built on the actual sales data okay so now for our final fit what we want to do is first break this up so I'm not doing just one graph I want to compare them all together so that graph I showed you earlier where you had five different graphs in it predictive models in it I want to do that so by using this piece of code right here PAR this this function with MF row what you want to do is if you have one comma one that's just one graph if you have two comma two that's four graphs if you have two comma three that's six if you have three comma three that will be nine graphs okay I've got five graphs I'm gonna build so I need to have this this one for six they don't have one for five so let's do this and that's not going to show anything yet but we now that we've done that now what we're going to do is we're going to use this for each one so I have our uh, we're pulling in our fit with seasonality our forecast on that then we've got our fit three which is our one 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 without seasonality so this one is with seasonality this one's without seasonality this one is uh, our custom fit model now don't use these numbers here it's actually zero three two five and what did we have zero 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 those are our actual models I tend to use this same process over and over again so uh, ignore the ones where it said on there that it was one on one it's actually zero 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 so actually I should probably take this let's make that zero comma zero comma zero and this one's the same thing zero comma zero comma zero and then this one was what zero three two five so let's make that correct so it's not misleading here zero comma three comma two five okay and then just make sure when you use it for another data set so you don't confuse other people that follow behind you that you update your uh, comments like I am doing right now so um, we have a zero 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 fit with seasonality we have a zero 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 without seasonality we have a zero three two five which is our custom ARIMA model okay and then we're also going to have the generic 111 so we got four different models there plus we're going to pull in the ETS model okay so we've already split the screen up so then let's just take this down to here okay and these are just using plotting them okay once the the forecast functions used in each so each one's basically almost the same code forecast of the name of the previous built TS model h equals 8 it puts it into this data frame f cast 5 and then we plot it so if we hit this control and enter see because I split it up into six sections if we had six graphs we would have all six of them filled we'd have one here now the most important thing we want to look at here is let's look at the visual fit of these models so we can see that they're all within you know the same scope and range but the problem is look at this one straight line straight line straight line okay look at this one and look at this one this one's almost a straight line now let's look at the moving average and the actuals which are these lines right here in each okay which one best meets our needs well when you look at this this one does that's our custom model right there now we also have the ETS model here which fits the data fairly well up to this point but then oh it gives you a straight line that that's just not representative of our data and uh, this one is the winner overall there but let's actually get the uh, accuracy and measurements of this so let's open this up I don't want to just depend on visuals like that now that's great to show your users or your boss or somebody hey this is why I want to go with this model that's wonderful but this is the icing on the cake so this is where we put accuracy the accuracy function so if you didn't put in those libraries I showed you earlier in the first video make sure you go back and put those in um, because otherwise this won't work and what I'm doing is I'm putting the accuracy these. so let's just run this control and enter now let's bring this up so you can actually see them okay now what I want you to see is the most important stuff is the MAPE okay followed by the RMSC and the M8 and they usually fall in line so when we look at this data we're looking at all the models let's look at the MAPE 71 71 68 what that means you subtract that from 100 and that's your actual percentage so these are like 30 percent or less 29 percent accurate this one is probably somewhere around the range of you know 30 what was it 30 40 no 32 percent accurate but look at this one that's our custom model right there 
and it's not 97%. That's from a earlier case study I did earlier, a different project I did with different data. Um, but on this model, with this data for the Kratom data set, that is the MAPE, which means that our accuracy is 100 minus 27, and that would be 73, basically 73%. Now, keep in mind, you can get higher accuracy, and believe me, I have. So if you have bigger data, you have more stores involved, you have longer periods of sales, you have more items, as the more, more data you have in, the more accurate your models are going to tend to be. So you can get upwards of 97, 98 percent accuracy with this process that I've got that I, through all these four videos for you here. Um, but with this data being that it's one store and it's one product line in one store that's a small store, it's not and it's highly variant, it's going to be very not very accurate. But with that in mind, for that data set, this is pretty good. So um, again, we have reached 73% accuracy with this, and we can prove it. And then if you go to the MAE, see how it's lower than the others? If you look at it, uh, they all go in line, and same with the uh, RMSE. So basically, uh, the MAPE is your mean absolute percentage error. Um, and it's a measure of the prediction accuracy and statistics. It's one of the most commonly used. And basically the rule of thumb is the lower the number, the better. So uh, if I had a five of MAPE, that means I have 95% accuracy. If I had a one of MAPE, I'd have 99% accuracy. That's very hard to achieve. So in this case, we have 73% accuracy. Now let's follow this up with the last line of code. So what I wanna show you next is um, how do you write this to a file? So let's say I want to write this out to a, uh, uh, it could be anything. So I might use, let's say I have on my desktop, uh, let's say I have a file called uh, Kratom, because this is for Kratom sales, okay? And, or a folder called that, and then we might say Kratom, Deseasonalize sales, right? And then we might even put the date for it and put .csv and then put that and that. And that's it. That's all we would have to do. So um, let me bring that back so you can see it here. That's all you would have to do to write this data of data 2A. So remember, 2A is the one with the deseasonalized data, and uh, data 2 is the one before that. So remember, we you have to go back and watch those videos. So part one, uh, what we did was we did some explore. We loaded our data, did exploratory data analysis, and uh, configuring our data and getting rid of nulls and NAs and things that we didn't want in our data. Then we had, uh, we in video two, we decomposed the data. We want to look at it, see what the effects, seasonality, trending, and stuff like that were had, autocorrelations, and seasonal differencing. Then in video three, we filtered, or we fitted, I'm sorry, fitted the ARIMA model, and we tested it with a holdout set. So in this case, we did not have a control. And a lot of smaller uh, campaigns and, and um, projects like this, you won't have a control. So you need to have a way to be able to get reliable predictions without a control. So what we did was use a holdout set. And with that holdout set, you create a training set and a testing set based on your data that you already have. And what you do is you roll back to like, we I think we did for week 41. So you roll back and say, okay, between 41 and 52 is our holdout, okay? And then we build our predictive model based on weeks one through 41 in this case. And then we bring back in our uh, actuals, our actual data for the weeks 41 to 52 and compare them and see how accurate we really were. Okay, and then we test based on that. And we did a lot of tests in this. Then what we did was in this video, the last video, we did further testing on this analysis. We you know, found the fit, the proper fit for it. We compared it with uh, several different models as you saw um, right here. And we obviously found that the custom ARIMA model was far more accurate than the others. I mean, the difference is between 
what we we had uh, seventy three percent accuracy, and the other ones had uh, like thirty percent or twenty percent, so much more accurate. Now and then we uh, so I showed you I taught you about MAPE and the other leading measures that we used, and then I showed you how to write the end output out to a CSV file. So in the end, you now have a complete walkthrough process that's reusable on lots of different data sets. Uh, it just has to be a time series based data set, okay? And uh, the more data you have, the more accurate you're going to be. If I had more product lines in this than just Kratom products, and if I had more uh, stores than just this one head shop, um, I would have a lot more data and I would have a much higher accuracy based off that data, most likely. Okay, and when you looked at this data, you can see that it's highly variant, and so that lowers the accuracy until I have more data in it. So if I had a couple more years of sales, this would be much more accurate. If I had more items, more product lines, um, and more stores, they would all make this more accurate. I have achieved with this actual process upwards of 97 to 98% accuracy. I think the highest I got was like 98.7, something like that, 98.75. Anything above, you know, where people start talking about 99.9% .9 accuracy and stuff like that, that's called overfitting. And the problem with overfitting is, is that you can use all kinds of boosting methods to make this very accurate on, based on this one data set. But the problem is if I roll in other data sets, it's not going to be applicable to them. It won't work for them, my accuracy will be horrible with them because I've overfit this to that one data set and I don't want to do this. So this model I know that I can use with any time series based data. I just know that depending on the data the accuracy is going to change. You know, I have to go back in and plug in and try different models and, and look at the different uh, measures and the tests that we did and in the end I come out with something like this and this is a complete project that you guys can use uh, just make sure you use your own data set because hiring managers will look and they will see, oh, you used somebody else's ideas and used what they did. No, use your own data. So you can use all the different code I use, and that's fine. I have no problem with that. Okay, and I want to encourage you to use my code. But the thing is, is I want you to use your own data. So find a data set, and there's many of them. There's thousands of them online that are free. Go find a data set that means something to you, whether it be the bike share data set. I love that one from the University of California, Irving. That's a great one to use. Um, you can use uh, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of different data sets out there. Find one that has meaning to you. That's the best way to learn data science and data analysis. Find data that m is meaningful to you. You know, if you like to look at uh, crime statistics in New York City, go for it. It's easy to find those. If you want to look at virus transmission rates, if you want to look at uh, bike share data, Uber data, uh, YouTube user data. They're all out there for you. You know, you can find all these data sets, find one that means meaningful to you, and then apply these ideas and methods, and you'll be amazed at what you can do. Um, again, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. Please subscribe and like down below so you can see all my other great videos I have coming out. I'm going to do all kinds of stuff. I've had requests to do an ARIMA X, Arima X model, um, many other things. We're going to do all these things and more shortly. So uh, thanks again for watching. Please subscribe and please go back and watch the other videos in this series and make sure you get this all the steps down. Thanks again. Have a great day.